hey, this is a teaching clinical neuroimaging case in MS. Um, so if you are faced with this young lady with an acute diminution of vision in the left eye, ask it for an MRI over the orbit, and it comes with this way. Do you think that these enhancements here are impressive of optic neuritis or involvement, inflammatory involvement to the optic nerves. Let's see. So just to remind you, the uh, MS is presenting with optic neuropathy in 20% of cases and subsequently 50% of patients de will develop an uh, attack suggestive of an optic neuritis. To diagnose an optic neuritis, this is a four-layered in, in MS. This has a four-layered diagnosis. You need to identify that this is actually an optic neuropathy and nothing, and nothing else and then it is an inflammatory rather than any co other causes of optic optic neuropathy and it is a demyelinating and from the demyelinating alter alternatives you would need to make sure that this is likely an ms um, and actually you need to ask yourself is this is actually a neurology case and has this been referred to ophthalmology first is a list of ch options that can present with an optic neuritis as a, as a clinical presentation. You might miss if you if it has not been checked properly. And here are the list of uh, everyday, everyday functioning that I would like to ask my patients to make sure how level, what, at what level of impairment uh, they are in. And here are a few other te clinical tips in the examinations that you would like to make sure to ascertain that you are, you have an optic neuropathy. And this is also a list of conditions that present with an optic neuropathy, but not necessarily an inflammatory one. Uh, and here is a snap of what we do. What we do know is that is an optic neuropathy suggestive of inflammatory demyelinating conditions. So come now comes to the question of what images exactly I should uh, I should look for. You. Before everything, you need to make sure that you are referring to an MRI scanner with a 1.5 Tesla or higher. Uh, you need a high field scanner and you need a contrast enhancement because you are approaching an inflammatory condition and contrast enhancement is essential here. And you need to ask for an orbit, a dedicated orbit study, and it implies few important things here, that you will need to apply a multiple planes, particularly or uh, along the optic nerve, and you need a fat suppressed sequence because the orbit is full of fat and the fat looks bright in T1 and T2. And of course, you will need to scrutinize to the orbital compartment so you have a good field of view because actually the optic nerve is a very thin nerve and it's easily to be missed if not a dedicated study is performed. In. And also you will need to look for a brain scan in the same time you would actually ask for both scans. Uh, and because likely, if it is a case of MS, it's likely to you you are likely to pick up case, uh, uh, lesions from the brain more than the optic nerve itself, or even more from the um, uh, op, uh, the uh, orbit MRI. Um, and for the purpose of the brain, so you would need to, you would need to look for uh, the rest of the visual pathway uh, beyond the tract for the chiasma tract, uh, optic tract, and then the, the optic radiation and the occipital cortex, you will need to look for MS-specific lesions, and you will need to double-check there are no red flags such as dural meningeal enhancement or other cranial nerves enhancements. Uh, uh, and here is a dedicated uh, MRI orbit, uh, fat-suppressed sequence, axial scans. This is a T2-weighted scan. And I would like to level this from down upwards, and as my preferred way of looking to that. So I'll first start with the uh, maxillary sinuses, which f f are filled with air. Then the first thing you would look for and you would find are the um, uh, inferior recti, recti muscles, which l should look straight, um, and then you would... Uh, look a little bit higher you will come up to the optic nerve itself which is not necessarily that straight and, and wide as the, the uh, inferior rectus muscle would be and actually the nerve would look like um, uh, uh, as a hyper intense signal surrounded by a rim of hyper intensity of the optic nerve sheath and the sheath also typically is slightly wider uh, closer to the globe and uh, be more fitting to the nerve as it approaches the, orb the orbital apex. And here is a better example of that. Then the optic nerve passes through a tight canal, bony canal here, 
called the um, optic canal. And uh, here is a better visualization of that. Actually, it would be better looked for the uh, on the CT scan on because because it will show the bone in a better way. And once the uh, uh, optic nerve passes through outside the optic canal, it starts to join the intracranial compartment, and this is the intracranial part of the optic nerve. And as it emerges into right and left here. And then this is a better looking stage of the intracranial compartment. They should, both nerves should meet in front of the pituitary stalk. So this is the optic chiasma here. And then after the optic chiasma, you should look, search for the optic nerves or actually the optic tracts running up and backwards. Here is a better visualization of the optic tracts running between the brainstem and uh, and the temporal lobes it should be running backwards laterally and upwards to join the uh, lateral geniculate body here and from that to start to have the optic radiation until it reaches the occipital cortex the visual pathway is not will not be will not ever be on a single plane and you would need to run up and down with your eyes until you fully visualize the uh, uh, optic pathway and uh, here is a better plane to see the optic nerve specifically because it's a coronal plane. You will you will be able to see the optic nerve in multiple planes and multiple slices compared to the axial ones. So it is again the center of hyperintensity and a rim of hyperintensity around, and it, they should both sides look symmetrical, and there is no enhancement in the orbital tissue around it. And uh, as it should be wide in the beginning, after the immediately below behind the eye globe, and then start to shrink, or the compartment, the orbital compartment starts to to shrink a little bit until it almost reaches the optic canal, and here it is within the optic canal, and then it is in the intracranial compartment. Here is. Um, approaching the chiasma pathway and then you would expect the chiasma in this level here and then here as well that's a different uh, MRI scan MRI study and then you would start to see the optic tracts running up through the chiasma level after that and in, 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 the, in the subsequent slices and here is a patient scanned without fat suppression so I can see here the fat content on the on the orbit is blurring any pathologies that can be picked up. And one important thing is to do you need to for when looking for T1 was uh, again this is a dedicated study with fat suppression. Uh, and this is a T1 pre-contrast and this one is a T T1 post-contrast. The main difference is that the muscles will enhance after a contrast enhancement. Actually, this is a very, very image we have seen in the beginning. And this is a T1 without contrast. And this should be artifactual. And unless you know what to look for and in what sequence, you would definitely make a false impression that this is actually... Um, an optic neuropathy. Um, here is an example of optic neuropathy uh, and optic neuritis in a patient with MS. As you can see, it is barely visible. The optic nerve is difficult to image, but it is larger here compared to that. And again, it is less in inflated and um, occupying the even the sheath. Uh, blurring the sheath compared to the other side and slightly bigger so you are confident and here is um, uh, a patient so if you can see here in in this patient it's really difficult to pick it up and, but after the contrast enhancement you can see that it takes the contrast and it, it there is a contrast uptake compared to this nerve so you need to look for um, the different sequences together to make a final impression and um, here is a, a, um, a patch of inflammation around the optic nerve, uh, typical of what can be seen in MS. However, it's not frequent to be seen in MS. So ideally, if you have a patient with an optic neuritis in MS and you have performed an MRI of the orbit, 
it can be fairly normal. It becomes a scan with non visible, no, no visible enhancement. Um, but the most important thing is that with this scan, you would rule out all the red flags and all the alternative um, diagnoses uh, that you need to exercise before confirming that this is MS. Um, here is another example and enhancing nerve compared to non enhancing nerve. And if you can see on the T2, they are fairly symmetrical and you could not pick an abnormality here. Again, you need to do a contrast enhancement uh, to pick uh, subtle abnormalities, particularly in the optic nerves. And lastly, it is the uh, once you have um, you had a suspicion that this is an optic neuritis in MS. There has been some information on the use of steroids. It's usually what can what can be uh, what can be shown of a benefit is that you uh, the IV methyl prednisolone compared to oral and only in speeding recovery, not for the final visual acuity outcome after six months to a year. However, subtle changes can be also be found to patient received steroids compared to no steroids and the um, uh, non-visual acuity measures such as um, uh, um, color vision and other visual uh, parameters. Thank you.